shall confess that Jesus, that Jesus, that Yeshua is the King. Yeah. 
So, Father, we desire you tonight. We desire you tonight, Father. We desire you, Father, more than anything else. We must have you, Jesus. 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 We must have you. Father, I pray that we'd go beyond just what we normally do in church. That our hearts would be affected tonight. That our hearts would burn from within at the sound of your voice, Jesus. Father, let our hearts burn from within, Father, for you, Jesus. Let our hearts burn for you, fresh and anew, Lord. Let it burn for you, fresh and anew. Take hot coals of fire, even now, and place it upon our hearts, that there be fire shut up in our bones. Fire shut up in our bones. Lord, we pursued you, and we loved you, and we fasted, and we prayed. Early on, Father, we would spend full nights with you. But as the days go by and the months go by and the years go by, sometimes we can go just a little bit faint in our relationship with you. But tonight, Lord, I pray that you would take hot coals of fire and that you would place it upon our hearts and our hearts would burn from within, that there be a fresh Move of God in us, in Jesus' name. Lord, not an intellectual pursuit of you. Father, not just a church-as-usual pursuit of you. Not plain house of God, but Father, that you would come walking into the sanctuary, placing your hand upon our hearts, that our hearts would truly burn for you that we would be burning ones for you. Cities that are set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Lord, let our hearts be so on fire that a hundred miles away that others can see us burn for you. Not that we would make a name for ourselves, but that others would see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Oh, oh, Father, in the end times, Lord, where so many, Father, attempted to just be status quo, I thank you that you are raising up a remnant. You're raising up a bridal company that's fervent, that's on fire. Hallelujah. Father, we don't want to just be in church as usual. We don't want to just go through the motions, Lord. We must have you. We must have you. Lord, I pray that the veil would not separate us, for it's already been rent. You're wooing us into the Holy of Holies. And so, Lord, we boldly approach your throne. And through the precious blood of Jesus, we can stand before your throne and we cry out, holy, 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 holy. Lord, would you burn all those things that displease you in us, Lord? Would you burn, Father, all the sin and the dross and the shortcomings and the carnality and anything that easily besets us? Would you burn it up in your presence tonight, Lord? That we would just stand there in your holiness, being changed from glory to glory. Oh, from glory to glory. Lord, we must be changed. We must be changed. We must be changed, Lord. We must be changed. We must be transformed. We must be changed, Lord. We must be changed, Lord. Change us. Change us, Lord. Change us. That we may hear those words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. May we not waste or squander the lives that you have given us, the breath that you have given us, but Lord, we will raise up, we will raise up 
and we will worship you. We will go up into the heights of the Lord and we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for moving in a very special way tonight. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this would be a resting place for your presence. For your manifest presence, Lord. Manifest yourself to us. Lord, we invite you to come and to dwell and to rest in our hearts, in our lives, and in this building. We're cultivating, Lord, that deep longing for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It is so good to enter into the Holy of Holies. It is so sweet to be in his presence. You can go to the mall, you can even go to the Super Bowl, but not experience the nearness of the Lord. I mean, if the world truly knew what it was missing, they would run to the altars. There's a big hole on the inside of them, and they're longing for something. What they're longing for is a person. His name is Jesus. He is our heavenly bridegroom, our sweet master, and his eyes that blaze like fire is looking in our direction. He's here tonight. Hallelujah. You know, I, I always prepare myself. I have my message. In fact, I have it right here. I can prove it to you. It's right here. <laughs> Some people say, I wonder if Steve's making that up. No, nope, my message is right here. In fact, I already put it on the, on the live stream. I was going to teach tonight on the value of a teachable spirit. It's a good message. But I'm telling you, during the worship, the last couple songs, I knew that the Lord was whispering to me, that's not the message. <laughs> Three weeks in a row. I get myself thinking all during the week. I don't just sermonize to sermonize, but I'm thinking and praying into a message all week long. I'm asking the Lord. Sometimes it's coming together early. Sometimes it comes together late. But lately, the Lord has been pulling fast ones on me. He gives me no time to prepare myself whatsoever. It's like sink or swim. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I can feel this. I feel the stirring in the spirit tonight. And I know that I have a word, at least one scripture verse. And we're going to go with that. But before we go any further, because I'm getting ready to jump off the cliff here. We're going to have some announcements, take up our offering. Just have a couple announcements. Don't miss next Sunday night. It's a very special Sunday night. We're doing two things that are special. Number one, Greystone will be here. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we'll be having live worship next Sunday night. And then also I've invited the new pastor of Newark Assembly of God, Pastor Dan. He was just extraordinary with a testimony about his near-death experience at the funeral of uh, Brother Dan. And when he was giving that, I knew that he had to come here and share that. So he will be sharing next Sunday night. So the Assembly of God and Refuge is going to be coming together. Hallelujah. We're excited about that. I know Cornerstone will be here. Grace will be here. And by the way, we're so excited to have our pastor over here from the Church of God. Amen. Amen. Glory. Abraham. Glory. 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 
We love him and his beautiful wife. I'm so thankful every time that they come. I still remember that special night that he shared. Remember when he shared, they led worship and he preached a fantastic sermon. So we're excited about what God is doing in Newark. And I'm excited to hear from Pastor Dan next week. So we want to show our support. And we want to fill this place to overflowing. I'm thankful that we have people here tonight because I was thinking, oh, Super Bowl. <laughs> but yeah, we have people here tonight. And next week, we're going to fill this place. We're going to bounce off the walls. I mean, we're going to dance like David dance. We're going to worship God. We're going to praise God. And we're going to hear a testimony that you will never forget. It's just extraordinary testimony of how God saved the life of a, a dear brother in Christ. We can't wait to hear from him. And to establish a relationship with another church in the area. So it's wonderful to have friends. All the pastors in the Newark area, we're not in competition with one another. They are my friends. Amen. They are my friends. And we don't talk every single day, but I tell you what, I know that if I needed something, I could call them. And I think they feel the same way. Yes. And if they ever needed a shoulder to cry on or they need a, a sympathetic ear to listen, I would be there in one second. And I can't say that about every area, but yet we live in a very special county, Wayne County, where that is taking place. And Refuge Ministries is smack dab in the middle of all of that, all of these beautiful churches, but we all come to support one another. And so it's so beautiful. So that's going to take place next Sunday night. We'll have our fellowship time at 5. The hot dog machine will be working early. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, I think we may you know, bring a little something extra next week. Let's make that little fellowship time. Let's spruce it up a little bit for our special guest. Amen. Let's wine them and dine them a little bit. Okay, and uh, I can't wait to do that next week. Our conference is coming up. Can't wait to the conference. People are already starting to book their hotels. Last time we did the conference uh, in Palmyra, the hotels were completely booked up. There's a lot of people that came and we're excited that people come from other states to Wayne County to be a part of a conference. And it's one year from the date that we put up that tent so I'm glad we're not putting up the tent this spring. Because boy, that was a lot of work. But that was fun, and it was a memory that we'll never forget. And it was an exciting time, and God was faithful. It was cold underneath that tent. But thanks to our friends at the Assembly of God and Lions, we had heaters. And so when you people started to realize when you sat close to the heaters, you stayed warm. But in this conference... No heaters will be needed because we'll be in here. But you want to come early because it is going to be full, overflowing. And I'm still trying to mastermind uh, a way that we're going to be able to feed everyone because that basement is not big enough. So we may ask everyone to put up their little four, what do you call them, the little tent things that are easy to put up, not hard and bring as many of those as we possibly can and set them up in the yard and put tables so that we have enough room to feed people because we will be feeding people on Saturday for lunch and dinner. And so last time, last fall, we had different believers coming from Canada and uh, we had people coming from other states and I'm excited to see who is going to come. I do know that there are many people that watch the live stream on YouTube after and they feel like they're a part of what's happening here in Newark. And they want to meet their brothers and sisters in the Lord. And so we're going to have an opportunity to get to know some refuge people that don't come because they live in other states. So it's going to be great. Put this down on your calendar. It's the first um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of May. And I have the posters coming on Tuesday. So next week they'll have here, our big sign and everything, all the publicity, the cards, everything is coming, and we'll be passing it out next week. And then lastly, last announcement before I hand it up to Brother Ron, my brother from another mother, 
is uh, don't forget about the Bible school. Our spring quarter starts in April. In April. And we're doing two classes, Introduction to the Deeper Life. And uh, the second class that we're giving is with Brother Steve Jones, speaking on the ways of God. And we're also having a chapel service. And so there'll be a Wednesday chapel and there'll also be a Thursday classes. And then we're considering Sunday night also to be a chapel service. So can you imagine on Sunday nights? I, I always say that, but I get excited every time I say it. That on Sunday nights, we have students here. And we also have refuge family here. We're all just worshiping the Lord. We want people to come to the school and have a face-to-face -face encounter with God, that their lives will be changed. So if you want to register for that, you can see me. If you're not computer friendly or whatever, you want to bypass all the computer registrations, just talk to me. And uh, I will do that. And if you're watching online and you're not sure how to do that all, you can send me an email. You can go to our website, oasisbible.org, and send me an email, and I will guide you through the process if it gets confusing for you. Brother Ron. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Good morning, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey. Hi, Chris. Long time no see. How you doing, buddy? I didn't see you when you came in. I talked to you when you came in, but I didn't get a chance to talk to you. We are going to pass the basket for the offering. It's funny um, watching Steve. As he's talking, he starts getting a little bit like Ernie. <laughs> then he starts moving. Then he starts moving faster. And he goes from 50 to 14. And I just keep waiting as he gets more and more excited to watch him bouncing and, and speaking about the things going on. Um, definitely entertaining, brother. Thank you. <laughs> but I agree with him. I mean, I, I'm not tremendously demonstrative. You know, I'm not going to bounce. If I bounce, God's really got a hold of me. <laughs> but is anybody else excited about this thing coming up in the spring? I, I I know some folks. I don't know some folks well. We we have done a bit of traveling over the years, past decade, fifteen years. We've been uh, global awakening several times. We go once, twice a year for for a series of conferences. We'd go to Toronto. We'd go here. We'd go there. Uh, Toledo. Um, but this is here, and I think that's what I love about it. It's here in Newark, and it's available. And, and we get to tell folks about it and, and invite them along. And it's just a wonderful time to get together. And, and it's just like, um, you know, when Jesus was praying, I think it was John 17, you know, Father, help them to be one as we are one. And I love that. Sometimes it drives my poor wife crazy because I like people. But... <laughs> But I love that we get to we get to know each other better. We get to we get to work towards that that oneness, and it's good good practice for the next time we see each other when we're all graduated, because we're going to spend a lot of time together. Let's pray, Hallelujah. Father. We thank you for for allowing us to gather. We thank you that we live in a country where we can. We thank you for everyone that's here that you put it on their heart to come. I pray now for this offering. We lift it up to you, that you would multiply it, that you would use it for your glory. And all that you have planned for Refuge Ministries, for Oasis Bible School, for this conference coming up in the spring, will glorify you and just explode. People will see the fire for miles. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I wanted to mention, uh, too, that I don't know if you knew this, but on our Refuge Ministries app, I've been placing notes of all of the messages that we've been getting. <clears throat> 
with some study questions and all the verses and everything. I don't have any notes for tonight, but by the time I finish this message, I will create notes on what's being spoken, and then I will place that on our app under Sermon Notes. And uh, I think this is a great way for you to, uh, to go over the message, study all the scripture verses, and then ask yourself the reflection questions that we have attached to the message and kind of go deeper, deeper into the message. And uh, often I'll, I'll give you some extras that you can do as well if you want to study the subject out more. So that's available at our app. And if you'd like directions on how to do that, just go to findrefuge.tv, click on the Refuge Ministries app link, and it will guide you to download that app. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for tonight. Lord, I, I'm just sensing, Lord, a an excitement in my spirit. Um, I'm sensing, Father, a fire burning on the inside of me. And I believe it's because of the fact that you are in this place, that you are here. Lord, I'm so thankful that you have dropped a thought in my spirit for tonight. And Lord, I would rather go by faith and give a message that's fresh off your throne, then Lord, just give a message that's intellectually pleasing and easier and more comfortable for me to give. So Father, I go by faith tonight and I'm asking you, Lord, that you would take the same hot coals of fire and place them upon my lips. Father, let me be able to deliver the word of the Lord, my dependency, is upon you. I ask you that you would hide me behind your cross, that you would receive the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Song of Solomon, chapter 1. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse number 4. I'm going to do half the scripture verse tonight. Draw me we will run after thee. The king has brought me into his chambers. Draw me. It seems like the more that we experience the presence of the Lord, the more we sense the stirring of the Spirit the more that there's a tangible anointing in the place, the more hungry we become for him. Do you know what I mean? You can go through periods of dryness where you it seems like the Lord is not as close, but when you begin to yearn after God and you sense the Spirit of God suddenly deep down inside of your spirit, you began to feel this hunger forming for Jesus himself, for the Master himself. You can go through periods where you feel like he's a hundred miles away. And we know that we all go through periods of dryness. And we'll even say to the Lord, Lord, where are you? I can't sense your manifest presence. And I know that we don't go by feelings. And I know that we have his abiding presence. His abiding presence is he's everywhere at the same time. His, his presence is always there, but it's veiled. The manifest presence is when there's a personal visit from a personal Christ. When Jesus steps down in a room and you know that he is there. That's when the tears begin to fill up in your eyes. That's when your heart begins to burn. You know that Jesus has just drawn near to you. There's an old hymn that says, near, Lord, near, near, Lord, near. 
And that has been a constant prayer of mine, that I would draw near to the Lord and that he would draw near to me. For there's a promise that if I would draw nigh to him, that he would draw nigh to me. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently, who are faithful to seek after him. So that means that when you're going through those dry periods of time and the tears are not coming down your face and you feel like he's kind of far away, you are faithful to pursue him. You are faithful to run after him and to say to the Lord, Lord, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. These words draw me are so prophetic. These words are a burning prayer inside of the heart of a passionate follower of Jesus. It is a prayer that says regardless of how they feel, regardless of the dark seasons that they may be entering into, regardless of what's going around them, they cry out, draw me, Lord. That is so powerful. <laughs> draw me, Lord. Can you hear the, I want you to hear the yearning in that. Because I assure you, it's not, draw me. It's not empty. When Solomon wrote this, it wasn't, draw me. Oh, no big deal. It was passionate. And the Song of Solomon is a very prophetic book, and I cannot wait to teach this book in the Bible school. It will literally change your life. I have mentioned it many, many times. The eight chapters in this book are prophetic. It's symbolic of our relationship with Jesus and how he is drawing his bride on the earth. Right now in America, right now in Canada, Right now, around the world, there is a remnant that is being formed, and they are crying out to God, draw me. In other words, make me more hungry for you, Lord. I am spiritually hungry, and I want more hunger for you. Sometimes the enemy will come in, when you are not super tenacious in your running after God, and he will begin to tell you that the Lord is mad at you and that nothing's happening, and why are you just, you know, pursuing God like this? And, and you tend to think that, does God really care? Does he really, is he really listening to my prayers? Or am I just another one of 8 billion people on this planet? Does he really place his ear toward me? And if there's one thing that causes God to begin to listen more carefully, it's when we cry out with spiritual hunger, draw me. Draw me. So when I feel like I'm going to a place where I'm not as hungry for God, rather than allowing the enemy to beat me up and make me feel bad, he'll lie and he'll say that you're carnal and all of these other things. What I do is I begin to cry out, Lord, draw me. When you're not hungry, ask the Lord to make you more hungry. When you don't feel like pursuing God, ask the Lord to cause you to be in that place where you begin to pursue the Lord. What we often do is we sit there and allow the enemy to assault us, and we just sit there and feel sorry for ourselves, and we feel bad that we're in the spiritual condition that we're in, 
When really the only thing that we need to do is admit to the Lord, Lord, I'm not as hungry for you as I once was. Lord, I remember when I would pursue you full nights. I remember when I would fast and when I would pray. But sometimes, Lord, I feel like I'm going on autopilot. But Lord, draw me. Hallelujah. Draw me. Don't leave me the way that I am. I hate the way that I am. So, Lord, draw me. Stir up that spiritual hunger on the inside of me. Enlarge my capacity to receive more of you. What I am receiving, Lord, is not enough. Enlarge me, Lord. Enlarge my tent pegs that I may receive more of you. Lord, I don't like myself when I begin to think carnally and I allow what's happening in the news and everywhere else to drag me down. So therefore, Lord, draw me. Draw me. That prayer of drawing is a prayer that will change your life. Cry out to God every single morning. Draw me, Lord. And literally in the spirit realm, if you could see into the spirit realm, you would see the Lord reaching towards your heart, touching you. He's saying, receive me. Wow. Receive me. I'm going to cause you to be more hungry. There were times I could remember where I would go through a personal revival, where it was like my devotional time with God, it was like, it was so easy. It was like powerful. I'd be weeping all the time during this revival season. I would drive my car, only thing I'd have to do is open my mouth, and I'd be, I mean, I'd be filled to overflowing. It's wonderful when we go through those spiritual revivals. And he gives us those spiritual revivals. He renews our spirit. But there are some times when we're not in those revivals. And when we're not, the enemy wants to come in and he wants to assault you. And he wants you to feel bad that you don't feel spiritual or that you're not spiritual. And he tries to lie to you. And what you need to do is just say, Lord, draw me. Draw me. And we go by faith. We don't go by sight. So there are seasons also in my life where I don't experience the manifest presence of God. But that's when I say, I thank you, Lord, for your abiding presence. You're always with me. You're always with me. You're in me. You never leave me. You never forsake me. I thank you, Lord, that you're always with me. And as I cry out to him and remind him that he's always with me, suddenly I can begin to sense the closeness and the nearness of the Lord. The nearness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Draw me, and we will run after thee. What is a result of of spiritual hunger and the Lord personally drawing you into his arms. Well, there's a running that takes place. We will run after thee. I'm calling our spring conference running after God. That's where the scripture verse is, where it speaks of that theme. We will run after Thee. When God touches you and gives you more spiritual hunger, you will begin to run after him. Now, this is the part that I love. As you run after God, you are then changed and transformed. There is a consecration. There is a deep crying out to deep that happens as you run after God. I'm not talking about sprinting. I'm talking about running after God with all of your heart. You're pursuing him. And in the pursuit 
of God, guess what happens? The dross, the habits, the bad fruit, the carnality, the stinking thinking, and all of that other stuff begins to fall off of you as you run after God. The enemy hates it when you're spiritually hungry and when you pursue God, when you run after him. He hates it because he knows that you're going to become more like Jesus when you run after God. It's in the pursuit of running after him where you are changed into his image where there is a Christ-likeness that begins to take place in your heart and in your life. Those things that you've been dealing with, those things that you have repented of, those habits that are ingrained in your personality, maybe it's a, a negative spirit. Maybe you're a negative Nancy. And you've tried to get rid of negative Nancy all you can. You cry out to God, God, draw me, draw me. And then begin to run after him and pursue him. And in that pursuit, you're going to find that negative Nancy begins to die. That the old man is buried and the new life begins to take place Hallelujah. and come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those things that we wrestle with, they die and they must bow at the feet of Jesus when we run after him, because when we're running after him, what we're doing is we're surrendering to the Lord. We're yielding our spirit over to him. We're saying, it's not my way, Lord. It's not my will, but your will be done. You're running after God and you're leaving behind all the old. Forgetting the past, what does the Bible say? Forgetting those things which are behind and pressing on toward those things which are before. As you press on toward those things which are before you, the old things begin to fall off of you. So ask the Lord as you ask him to draw you. Lord, give me more spiritual, more spiritual hunger. Then also ask the Lord that he would conform you into the image of the Lord in that pursuit of him. And then lastly, is the third part of this verse, which is my most favorite part. Draw me, we will run after thee. The king has brought me into his chambers. Now that is good. I could just shut the Bible and say amen. There's a lot of good teaching right there on the chambers of the Lord. When you're hungry for God, as you begin to pursue the Lord, he will bring you into his chambers. He will bring you into a deeper relationship with him. He'll bring you into an intimacy that you didn't even think possible into the chambers. Now know this, back in biblical times, if you just walked into the king's chambers and said, hey king, how you doing? You would lose your head. You couldn't just walk into the chambers, the inner chambers. Not even the queen could go into the inner chambers of the king without an invitation. But yet we have an invitation from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, an invitation to draw near to the Lord and to run after him. And as a result of our pursuing God, he will then bring us into his chambers, which is the reward of those who diligently seek him. What is the reward of those who diligently seek him? It is being called into the chambers of the king. Now, how does that look like? How does the chambers of the king look like? I want you to know that it's a time of intimacy with just you 
and Jesus. It's a time when you sit there and you know that he is faithful to be sitting there with you. You know that he's there. It's not that you're faking it. I'm talking about you know that the sweet master is drawing near to you and he's bringing you into this deeper relationship where you're very sensitive. You're sensitive. So sensitive that even the thought of him looking in your direction would cause your eyes to well up with tears. You see, this is not just a good teaching. This will change your life. I'm going deeper tonight than what I usually do, but I really sense this is what the Lord wanted me to give you tonight because there is an open invitation to every single one of us, myself included, there is an invitation from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the same God who stood over the universe and created it with a spoken word. The same God who created the heavens and the earth. The same God who stood on dry ground and began to create trees and plants and animals and birds and fish. Have you ever thought about that? Every single animal God thought up in an instant? Our scientists are so dumb. <laughs> the spirit of stupidity to say that this all was an accident and then suddenly a blob appeared on the slime at the bottom of a body of water, which we have no idea how the water got there. I do. He hovered over the face of the deep. He created the water. <laughs> and then a frog appeared. And eventually that frog mutated into a monkey. <laughs> that is the stupidest thing that you have ever heard in your entire life. It, I cannot believe that intelligent people actually believe that. And when you watch any kind of scientific video, any of them, almost 99%, they all teach evolution as a fact. <clears throat> all the earth, which is 20 billion years old, and it, as if that's true. That's not true. It's not true. And you're crazy to believe it. It takes much more faith to believe that we were just an accident. It's like saying, all those cars out in the parking lot just happened. Yeah. Well, how did they get here? It just happened. Well, how did that car become a car? Well, there was a big bang. <laughs> and all the right parts came out of nothing and formed and they all went perfect places and spots to function properly to become a car and all the different cars same thing happened on accident if I said that you'd be like Looney Tune time <laughs> brother needs to you know yeah. go get some counseling <laughs> same thing with these beautiful paintings that you see someone came up to me and said Steve, uh, where did you get that painting? And I would say, well, you know what? There was this big bang. <laughs> big bang. And, and suddenly, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this painting formed on the wall. Diane didn't hang it up there just right. If there's a design, there's a designer. Amen? Amen. Well, that designer, his name is God, and he formed the world with a spoken word, and he wants a personal relationship with you. He wants to bring you into the chambers. That's that place of intimacy with him. And he wants you 
to know him face to face, heart to heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. There's a table that has been spread and there's an invitation that has gone out. He's already knocked on the door of our hearts. Will we enter in and sit at his table and feast on his presence? And tonight we say, yes, yes. we will. Hallelujah. Draw me, Lord. Draw me. Make me more hungry. And I will run after you. And in the running, Lord, that those negative things in my life, they are going to fall off. And in the running, I will hear that voice because I pursued God. He is then a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And suddenly I will hear the invitation to enter into a special, not a status quo, not a Laodicea, but a special close, near relationship with Jesus himself into the inner chambers where I'm being burned by his presence, transformed into a beautiful bride that when I stand before him one day, and we will all stand before the Lord one day, we will not be strangers, but we'll be lovers because we have pursued him and we have asked the Lord over and over and over and over, Lord, make me more hungry for you. Make that your daily prayer. Draw me, Lord. Make me more hungry for you. When you feel like you're getting a little lazy, draw me, Lord. Make me more hungry for you. As you ask him, he will give you more hunger. Ask and you shall receive. Press down, shaken together, and running over. That's not just money. Ask him for more hunger. And watch him give you more hunger. And watch him bring you into his inner chambers. Amen. Where you see him face to face. And his eyes that blaze like fire. Will transform your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I thank you, Lord, that you would use these words to literally burn our hearts. Lord, I pray that when my dear friends leave this building tonight or to shut off the live stream, that they would forget me, but Lord, they would remember your words. And something would happen on the inside of them to pursue you a fresh and a new in 2024. Lord, we want to grow more in 2024 than what we did in 2022 and 2023. So Lord, we're asking you to draw us. Give us more hunger, Father. Give us more hunger. Help us to run after you, Jesus. Give us the grace to run when we're tired and weary and heavy laden. And Lord, let us enter into your inner chambers, that place of deep, intimate, profound relationship with you. Oh, Father. Let your eyes that blaze like fire burn our hearts. Father, I pray that there would be a literal burning inside of every heart that is listening right now. I pray a burning in Jesus' name. Let their hearts burn for you. Their hearts burn for you. May my heart burn for you. I love you so much, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we pray ahead of time for next Sunday night. I pray that we would have revival in this place. I pray that Pastor Dan would not even guess the outcome. Maybe he thinks he's just going to come and give his testimony, but I pray that you would break out in this place next Sunday night. That our worship and praise would be pleasing to you. That we would dance like David danced. That we would be passionate and fervent. And I pray that you would anoint our dear Pastor Dan. Anoint him, Father. Stir him all this week. Quicken him all this week. Speak to him that he would deliver the word of the Lord in this place. Lord, I pray that new relationships would be birthed and born. That new friendships would be kindled. And I pray, Father, together, all of us, Father, as one would see a mighty revival sweep through Wayne County. And that you, Jesus, would receive the glory. Yes. Not one man, but that you would receive the glory. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 The special presence of the Lord here tonight. I feel like I have this fresh desire to cry out, draw me, Lord. I want to never camp out on what I have, but I want to go deeper. For all eternity, you realize that we'll be going deeper in the Lord. We should never say we've arrived. Well, I'm saved, I'm filled full of the Holy Spirit, I speak in tongues, I was baptized in water, I've arrived. <laughs> Just beginning after that. Just beginning. So thank you, Jesus. Amen. Lord bless you. If you'd like special prayer, I'm here. Be more than happy to pray with you. Anybody have anything to say? You want to, to say anything before we say amen? I, maybe we should have everybody pray for dad, too. Because he goes in the well. Yes. Pray for me, Yeah, pray for my dad. Um, tomorrow... He goes to see a specialist, and they they begin to um, start more of the treatments and things. He's already started some things, but you know he's uh, sometimes he feels a little bit like a guinea pig, I guess you could say, where he kind of feels like the the doctors and things are more concerned about him being a guinea pig than they are a person. And like, since he's 80, gonna be 83, or he's 83 now, like they don't really truly care about him. And so it bothers him and stuff, and he feels some stress and anxiety about going tomorrow. And it turned to leukemia too. Yeah, and yeah, his cancer did turn to leukemia, full blown leukemia. So we're trusting the Lord that um, as he goes through this, that God's perfect will would be done. And uh, if it works, and praise God, we have him for another year or two. But if the Lord takes him, uh, prepared my heart, and as hard as it is, I will not be selfish with my dad. If it is his time to go to be with my mom, then I can't be selfish. I can't. But we want God's perfect will, whatever that is. Amen. So if anyone feels led to say a prayer.